यहां देखो वर्ड्स वेलकम टू आर मिड वीक सर्विस थैंक यू ऑल फॉर जॉइनिंग अस एंड वी हैव वन मोर एडिशन ऑफ दिस वेडनेस डे सर्विस एंड टुडे इंसिडेंटली इट सीम्स टू बी ऑल सेंट्स डे uh do not confuse it with the tomorrow's all souls day today is all saints day and uh, we join together in this uh, beautiful time of worship praising god and thanking god for his bountiful blessings all the past 10 months and today is the first day of november may the lord bless you abundantly and may your home be filled with gladness and joy and laughter and uh, whatever desire that you have in your heart i pray that the lord would fulfill it in time to come and as we begin this evening i would read from uh, the beautiful passage of uh, 1 corinthians chapter 13 which says love is patient and kind a love is not jealous or boastful it is not arrogant or rude love does not insist on its own way it is not irritable or resentful it does not rejoice at wrong but rejoices in the right love bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things maybe bow our heads in prayer and uh, let's pray and let's sing this beautiful old chorus let the beauty of jesus be seen in me let the beauty of jesus be seen in me all his wondrous compassion and purity oh the spirit divine all my nature refine till the beauty of jesus be seen in me let's pray dear god our loving heavenly father we pray tonight that the beauty of our lord jesus christ would be seen in us heavenly father although we are surrounded by evil and wickedness you have called us to be people who love even though people hate us heavenly father we pray that you would give us and grant unto us empower us with the power of the holy spirit that we would be the kind of people of god who would love despite and no matter what happens and we pray gracious lord for every aspect of our lives we commit it to you tonight heavenly father we thank you for all our young people here we pray that you would bless them abundantly and most especially heavenly father we pray that as they sing and make music uh, may this time be a time of celebration a time of rejoicing and a time of acknowledgement of your fatherly goodness towards us we pray for each one who has joined us this evening we pray wherever they are that you would bless them and we pray gracious lord that you would protect each one continue heavenly father that you would lead us and uh, use our talents for your glory abide with us while we listen to your word understand your word and also heavenly father we pray that you would lead us into the transforming power of our lord and savior jesus christ in his matchless and blessed name we ask this prayer amen call upon our young people at this time to come and lead us in a time of praise and worship God is good. God, Amen. At this time, let's all open up our hearts and let's all praise Him. Let's celebrate. Let's give some love and let's celebrate the Son of God. Joy, nothing else can bring. All for it, celebration. 
Oh, at your word, take your candle. Oh, at your word, there is a candle in every soul. Some brightly burning, some dark or cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes it known. Carry your candle, run through the darkness, seek out the hopeless, confused and torn. Hold down your candle for all to see. Take your candle, go at your world. Take your candle, go at your world. Carry your candle, run to the darkness. Seek out the hopeless, confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see. Take your candle, light the world. Take your candle, light your world. Father, Lord, we thank you for this time, Lord. We come with each and every body into your hands, Lord. Even as, even, even as we're going to listen to the word, Lord, help, help us, Lord, to attend it, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be alert, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything I've done in our life. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening. The scripture portion for this evening is taken from Matthew 5, verses 43 down to 48. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 down to 48. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be the sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil side and on, on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you salute only your brethren, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. May the Lord bless the scriptures. Good evening once again and uh, welcome to our midweek service. Uh, so glad to see so many of you today. And uh, today's passage that we have is from Matthew chapter 5, verses uh, 43 to 48. Uh, but first let me thank uh, Andy and uh, Augustina and also Ben Hin for uh, 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 leading us in a time of meaningful praise and uh, worship. Uh, for them, it is something new. So uh, they are finding it a little difficult to kind of adjust to some of the old songs. Maybe they knew, know the new songs perfectly well. But however, they are making that effort. And I praise God for their efforts in uh, learning new songs. Uh, actually, those are the very old songs. But uh, for them, it's new. But they are learning. And I'm so glad that they make that effort and also uh, thank Emmanuel for being a part of uh, uh, Wednesday evening service also uh, while uh, we project this. Uh, very briefly, we will look into it uh, today and if you have your Bibles, keep it ready so that we would be able to uh, look at uh, this entire passage. Uh, we will just uh, break it off into three parts and then uh, look into it. Earlier in Matthew chapter 5, if we see, Jesus said that those uh, uh, who were persecuted were blessed because 
great was their reward in heaven. In today's section of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus explained how we are to respond to those who persecute and say evil things against us. And we do that by loving them. Very difficult. Uh, how do you love people who are persecuting you? How do you love people who are saying evil things against you? I mean, at times it so happens that we want to get back at people. So the first thing is, Jesus is calling us love. Don't hate them. Matthew chapter 5 verses 43 to 45 speaks of it and says, You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be sons of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. The first place where we see this phrase, love your neighbor as yourself, is found in Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18. What we don't find there in that passage is hate your enemy. The religious leaders probably of that day had uh, added to God's command for their own benefit so that they would be able to declare anyone they wished or they wanted as an enemy and therefore justify not helping such kind of a person even though God's word said contrary to what uh, they are uh, uh, teaching or explaining. And Exodus chapter 23 verses 4 to 5 says, If you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering off, be sure to take it back to him. And if you see the donkey of someone who hate, whom you hate has fallen down under its load, do not leave it there, but be sure to help him with it. God wanted his people to treat each other well or treat each other with love and care and concern, even if they are enemies. Treat them with kindness. And the people of Jesus' day understood as uh, you needed to love a fellow being or a fellow person or a fellow Jew. But they were again allowed to hate a foreigner. But that was dealt with a long time ago. Leviticus chapter 19 verses 33 to 34. It's very good to go back into the Old Testament to see what was said and how we relate it to modern times and what Jesus is saying. When an alien lives with you, Leviticus chapter 19, 33 to 34, when an alien lives with you in your land, do not mistreat him. The alien living with you must be treated as one of your native born. Love him as yourself, for you were aliens in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Although there are places where God commanded otherwise, the teachers of the law had smeared the scriptures and taught whatever they wanted or whatever suited them. And the understanding rule of that day was, love your friend and hate your enemy. That was what they said. And times haven't change much, have they? There are plenty of people today who don't like someone because of their color or maybe because of their race or their culture or belief. Uh, they hate everyone, uh, especially hate those people who are better than them. It happens so much. Maybe it happens in your neighborhood. Maybe it happens in your office. Hating people who are different than them or who are better than them. But Jesus said things right. He's basically saying that we are not to hate anyone even if they hate us. Well, that is very tough. That's really difficult for us in modern times also. Uh, when we teach people, when we say you've got to love. Sometimes people reconcile, but sometimes they don't. If we know that someone is hating us or hates us, it is automatic or maybe it just comes from within. Maybe it's human nature to hate them back in return, even if we did not have any issue with them prior to that point. But Jesus wants us to change the way we operate. And that is transformation. He wants us to respond to each one of them in love. He's asking us to do something very difficult. I know that. It's very difficult to love our enemy. 
it's hard to show love to a stranger someone who has never done anything to us let alone uh, show it to someone who has shown that they uh, don't uh, like us it happens all the time maybe jesus is asking us to do something difficult and i think uh, we've got to work together and do that with our own power or within our own power it's very difficult within our own mind it is very difficult uh, but then god wants us the lord wants us and jesus is calling us to do this in the power of the holy spirit and that is why it is very important to have the indwelling of the holy spirit jesus wants us to act in accordance to our spirit nature not our fleshy nature showing that we are all children of god and showing the world the unbelievable ability of someone who operates in that kind of uh, power loving people i i remember i saw a video i am sure that you, you must have uh, seen uh, it's a video of a, a very young person belonging to a different community belonging to a different religion he was saying you people are christians you people are being persecuted your churches are being uh, uh, demolished you are being beaten you are being persecuted but you are not saying anything you are quiet you are not responding and then he went on further in that video and said we probably it would have uh, happened to me i would be very angry and i would do this and do that and so on and so forth how can you be quiet uh, maybe because we christians are quiet because uh, we are trying to see that we are a people who love but maybe the world looks at it very differently and that is why the lord is calling us to stand out that's the second aspect of it god is asking us to stand out the lord jesus is asking us to stand out matthew chapter 5 verses 46 and 47 if you love those who love you what reward will you get are not even the tax collectors doing that and if you greet only your brothers what are you doing more than others do not even pagans do that in these verses jesus is pushing us to a higher level we are called to stand out we are meant to shine the light of our lord jesus christ and draw attention so that we can point people to jesus christ we can redirect people to jesus christ loving those who love us will not stand us but loving those who love us is not a natural thing to do it's something it's a natural thing to do it's something that those who don't know jesus also do it and when we see our friends or those whom we know we normally greet them very warmly that's what everyone does not only regular people but even unbelievers uh, do that and that's what jesus was saying and jesus highlights pagans and tax collectors tax collectors were not highly regarded people some of them were fellow jews who were hired by the romans and the fellow jews did not like them therefore they were considered as traitors accosting the people in order to collect taxes for rome there was a greek poet his name is theocritus when asked which of the wild beasts were more cruel well he answered and said bears and lions in the mountains and tax collectors in the city uh, that was how tax collectors were hated and jesus is saying even ruthless people are able to show kindness to those who are kind to them so we as a people of god we need to do much better when we show kindness to someone who has disrespected us that will make people to take notice but this would be very uncomfortable because we don't want to draw attention we just want to go about our daily routine and keep to ourselves it's so easy uh, for all of us to get sucked into someone's negativity but when we maintain kindness in the face of hostility we are making sure 
that the devil will not gain a foothold or a victory in our lives. Instead, we will shine the light of Jesus and give him the victory. Um, today we know that there is so much happening, especially on social media and all over the news of the war that is going on in the Middle East. A war between Israel and the rest. So much of trouble. Here's the story of uh, an Armenian nurse. That's an old story. Uh, she had been held captive along with her brother by the Turks. And her brother was slain by a Turkish soldier before her very eyes. But somehow she escaped and later became a nurse in the military hospital. And one day she was stunned to find the man who had killed her brother and had captured and was brought wounded to the hospital where this Armenian nurse worked. And something within her cried out and said, Vengeance! But a stronger voice within her called her to love. And she nursed the soldier, that wounded soldier, that Turkish soldier, back to health. And the recuperating soldier asked her, why didn't you just let me die? And she answered, I'm a follower who says, love your enemies. Do good to them who hate you. The soldier was very, 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 very impressed. She actually stood out. Actually, she had probably many opportunities that she could harm this man. But no, she didn't. And then this Soldier said, I never heard such words before. Tell me more. I want this kind of religion. Christians becoming more like Christ. Christians becoming inspired to love their enemies and those who aren't saved, being compelled to want to learn more about the salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, that is what happens. Now, when we do not, uh, when we uh, do not respond in the manner uh, where people respond to us, and then finally, in verse forty-eight, Jesus calls us to be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect, loving our enemy isn't enough. Loving our enemy isn't enough. We have to be perfect as well. Talk about impossible standards. And this is one standard which uh, seems impossible. When we put our faith in Jesus, his sinless perfection is transferred to us uh, when we put our trust in him. Now God sees us through the lens of his son. In essence, in essence, God is calling us that we need to become perfect. We don't become perfect immediately once we come into Christ or after baptism. We go through a sanctification process. Life is a process. Everything is a process. We go through this sanctification process, the process, the process of becoming more like Jesus Christ. And God calls us to that. We turn away from the thoughts and behaviors that are not of Christ and beginning and begin to develop the character that is of Jesus Christ our Lord. And we are responsible. And we are able to do what we know we have to do. And regardless of whether or not perfection can be achieved, we need to strive to get as close as we can. And that is why God provides us with all that strength doing the most we can during the short time that we have in this world about the greatest good that you and I can do for the kingdom of God. And God has given us work to do. He has not just simply let us loose here on this earth. He wants us to multiply our talents. He does not want them to be buried God wants our talents to be put to work. God wants our time to be put to work. Uh, we need to do the best we can with the 
or whatever abilities and talents or whatever we have been given and I'm sure that we have been given the best for whatever we can take and whatever we can do. Different people have different abilities, different talents and God wants us to use them for his kingdom. God wants us to use them and God has given you a lot and God has has given you the best. Have you ever watched a child mimic their parents? You see a lot uh, happening in the lives of uh, people. They want to dress like their fathers. They want to look like them, act like them. Uh, they sit near them and mimic every move and gesture. Why? It's because of their love and admiration. They want to be like their father. And it's no different for us as the children of God, as God has placed us. But the worldly nature still exists or persists. The battle goes on. It's a battle we have. That's where we need the power of. That's why the Bible also tells us that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who called us. Being like Christ is not easy. Being like Christ is not easy. Attaining that perfection is not easy. But it is worth it. To give it a try. It is very uh, difficult. It's very difficult lesson in modern times. With the, all that is happening around us. But God calls us to fulfill the vision of the church. To love no matter what the circumstances. That is what the love of Christ compels us to do. Tonight, before we go, I do hope that the Holy Spirit would inspire you so that you would take this matter in your hand and to be better than before. I know it's tough. Maybe try it out. The Lord will bless us abundantly. Now, sometimes it's very difficult for us to keep quiet when somebody says a word, but then the Lord is calling us God is calling us to go through that grinding so that we would be able to love others as Christ has loved us, as God has loved us. Have a wonderful evening and God bless you and God be with you. Once again, thank you so much for joining uh, with us uh, tonight and uh, do hope that uh, uh, you would join us again uh, next uh, Wednesday. Uh, same time, same place. And uh, may the good Lord uh, be with you in your home. And then, of course, please do join us for our Thanksgiving service on uh, Sunday morning or evening. And I uh, do hope that we would have a, a wonderful day of giving thanks to the Lord for all the bounty that he has given to each one of us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's pray. Eternal God, our loving Heavenly Father, thank you tonight for giving us this beautiful lesson to love our neighbor Heavenly Father, we pray that we, in your strength, in our strength, Heavenly Father, know, we know that it is very difficult, it is very tough, we can't do it. But Heavenly Father, we pray that you would provide your grace for us. Heavenly Father, help us to open up our eyes so that we would be able to see Jesus and let the beauty of Jesus be seen in our lives. Heavenly Father, as we know from your word that love is patient, love is kind, Help us to be patient. Help us to be kind. Help us to bear all things because Jesus bore all things. Sometimes, O oh Lord, we are not ready to face ridicule or insult. But tonight, Heavenly Father, we pray that your word would teach us and make us better persons so that through Jesus Christ our Lord and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we would share the good news of love of Jesus Christ with others. Pray, Heavenly Father, that there will be peace in this world. And we pray, gracious Lord, that uh, your presence and your love would be in the hearts of all the people everywhere. We pray, Heavenly Father, that more and more number of people would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Come to know him and follow him in truth and in trust. Abide with us and once again, thank you for each one who has joined us this evening, we pray that you will bless their lives, their homes, their families, 
and all that uh, they are going through. Uh, Heavenly Father, if it's a difficult time and difficult proposition, somebody needs healing, somebody needs your touch tonight, somebody needs uh, to be touched because they are sick, somebody needs to be touched because they are lonely, somebody needs to be touched because they are going through a rough period or a tough time in their family or in their workplace or in their neighborhood. Heavenly Father, you are an all-sufficient God, a God who provides peace and comfort and strength and hope. Once again, dear God, we thank you for every blessing of life which you have poured out upon us. Continue to lead us and guide us. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion and sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us and hope to see you next week. God be with you and take care.